Am I the a-hole stories? Update. Am I the a-hole for requiring my sister to sign a legally binding contract before I loan her money? Original post. I, 42 female, have a successful career and inherited a decent amount of money from my late husband. I'm nowhere close to being a millionaire, but it's enough so that as long as I'm smart with the money, to only work because I want it by the time I hit 45. That's including any college expenses my two children may have in the future, so long as they go to a state college. Family knows that I have money, and while I don't mind giving a couple hundred dollars here and there, because I know I most likely won't get it back, I draw the line at anything $400 plus. They know this, but that still doesn't stop them from trying and I've always stayed firm on this. Well once the pandemic hit, my brother-in-law, 35 male, lost his job, and my sisters, 37 female, job have reduced her hours until further notice. Two weeks ago, I got a call from my mother, asking if I could come over. I had no problem with this and swung by the next day, and found my sister already there, and I could tell she had been crying. Based on the title, you all know where this is going. So, with me, her, and both our parents there, my sister informed me, that even though her job was expected to go back to regular work hours in early 2021, there was a rumor that they would also be downsizing. She wasn't sure if her job would be secure and brother-in-law still hasn't found any luck in getting a new job yet. I knew what they wanted and tried to play dumb at first, and offer to help find brother-in-law and my sister jobs. My sister said that that was very generous me and she would take the offer, but in the meantime what they really needed was a loan. My sister asked for at least $40,000 to help with paying off their credit card, manage the mortgage, make payments towards their student loans again, and still have some money left over in case the worst happened. I was quick to tell them that they were asking a lot for me, that while I did have some money, I didn't just have $40,000 laying around to give out on a whim. I told them I'd have to check my finances and think about it. After two days, I started getting inquiring texts from my parents and sister, and told them that I was busy this week and that I'd let them know over the weekend. I checked the numbers and it was cutting it a little close, but it was doable. However, I still didn't like the idea of just giving the money away without any reassurances that I'd get it back. I drew up a rough draft of a contact and emailed it to my sister, stating that I was willing to give her money after she signed the final draft and that the money would have to be given in three separate installments. My family was furious, said that as the older sister, it was my duty to look out for my sister in her time of need, and to make her sign a contract was offensive. I countered with, that since my sister has never paid me back whenever I loaned her money since the day I married my husband, I think this was more than fair. Everyone is still angry with me, so I just wanted a more neutral perspective. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole, but don't do it. Don't lend money you can't afford to lose. Even with a legally binding contract, if your sister doesn't have any money, who are you going to sue to get it back from? It doesn't sound like you are comfortable losing this amount of money, which realistically you probably will. Not the a-hole, never mix money and family, that's what a real bank is for. Sister has bad credit right now. Let that be a big waving red flag on why you shouldn't lend her that kind of money. Not the a-hole. Even with a signed contract, you may never see that money again. In fact, I very much doubt you will. Why you ask? They want to use part of that money to pay off credit cards, which tells me they were living beyond their means. And the fact that they need $40,000 loan to handle stuff like mortgage, tells me they have no emergency fund in place. Two likely outcomes if you loan her the money, even if she signs a contract. 1. She doesn't repay and you have to take her to court. She doesn't repay and she file for bankruptcy. Either way you will never see that money again. You really need to think about the a few hundred here and there, if that happens often, that adds up too. Not the a-hole, especially since your sister has never paid you back ever. 40k is some people's salary for the whole year. I would make her sign a contract too. If your parents are so mad, they can lend her the money. You have your own family to worry about. Edit, WoW stepped away for a couples and I wanted to say thanks for the support. Also, I keep seeing a few of the same questions pop up, so I'm going to clarify slash mention a couple of things. 1. My sister and her husband can't get a loan from the bank, or at least not much, because their credit isn't the best right now. 2. To my sister and brother-in-law's credit, they did have some savings but are burning through it since my brother-in-law is currently out of work, and my sister doesn't work enough hours right now. Also, they have kids. 
3. After I got married my sister started making little jokes, that compared to what my husband makes, what's a few couple dollars to family every now and then. Over the years, I gave my sister at least $2,500 that she never paid back, and I just stopped counting after a while because it would get me upset. I just made it a habit to stop giving her money. Although I would still pay whenever we went out to restaurants, the movies, or the spa. Edit 2, OK had to step away again for personal stuff and when I checked I saw even more responses, all talking about how I would collect my money if my sister either refused, or couldn't pay me back. I left that part out because I wanted to focus on just the idea of the contract itself rather than the technicality part. As previously stated, I email my sister a rough draft of the contract and was planning on having it notarized so that it was official but as collateral I would ownership of her and my brother-in-law's cars, if they couldn't pay. Hope that clears a few things up. And now for the update. Thanks to all the wonderful and helpful comments. I won't lie, familial pressure slash guilt was getting to me a little because I realize how fortunate I am. I also wanted to apologize for downplaying my socioeconomic status. I just had been living beneath my means for so long, I sometimes forget how fortunate I truly am. I just wanted to show my children the importance of being financially responsible and rarely ever splurged. In the end, I contacted my sister and brother-in-law for a sit-down, public so they couldn't cause too much of a scene, but private enough so we could vaguely discuss sensitive information, plus there was the social distancing. I simply did a basic laid down of the situation. I told them that I needed them to hear everything I had to say first, and if they interrupted me, I would walk away and not give slash lend them a cent. First, I told them that it is good to help family when you can, but couldn't give them $40,000. I am able to offer them $3,200 per month for at least 6 months. I told them that I simply can't afford any more without it affecting my kids, and that I am a mother before I'm a sister or daughter. I also told them that I can't afford to bail them out every time they're in trouble, and that since the future is so uncertain, I may not always have the means to care for others. My money is going to have strings attached, and if they didn't like it, they could go somewhere else. I made it clear that I wasn't doing this to be mean or controlling, but I want to help my sister help herself. The rules were. A. The money would be deposited in a new joint bank account with one authorized signer. B. My sister and brother-in-law were going to meet with a financial advisor, which I would pay for. C. Since neither of them are working, it doesn't make sense to have two cars so I expect them to sell one of them and then our parents can let my sister or brother-in-law use one of their cars when they need it. D. Before they can get the first payment, they will be having their meeting with a financial advisor, and I will be in the meeting just so I know they went. I made it very clearly, that this is the best that I could give them. They looked upset, but I told them that beggars can't be chooser. They said they think about it. I knew that my sister was going to cry to our parents, so I called them as soon as I got in the car and told them everything. I said I'm not changing my mind and that if they feel my sister needs more than what I'm offering, they're more than happy to downsize and sell their own home, or take out money from their own retirement and SSI, since family helps family. If there's an update I'll put here as an edit. Now for some top comments. I said I'm not changing my mind and that if they feel my sister needs more than what I'm offering, they're more than happy to downsize and sell their own home, or take out money from their own retirement and SSI, since family helps family. Brave. Clap clap clap. This is how it's done. Your sister will hopefully realize that your money comes with a string that can be pulled, and you are not just an ATM for them. They want to treat you like a bank, so now you can act like a bank and give them rules to follow. Good on you for cutting them off at the pass and breaking the news to your parents. And shutting up your own parents who would make excuses for them. Your parents are free to give your sister money if they feel so strongly. Not the a-hole. Exactly. OP is very brave and 100% not the a-hole. OP's sister should be very grateful. OP could have gave her nothing yet OP still tried. OP seems like a great person. Good for you. Just because you can help them now, doesn't mean 6 months or a year from now you'll still be able to. If they can't understand that, I'd give them less than $3,200 per month. I was initially going to give them $4,000, but decided it should be less than that. Good for you. And I would add to the contract, or at least to your conversations, when you expect payments and of how much. They need to demonstrate to you how they intend to pay you back and when. I speak from experience, I'm also a widow and my late dear husband's brother asked for money after my dear husband passed away. I said no. I also had a mortgage and two kids to put through college. 
All of DH's four sibs asked for money while he was alive. They always framed the requests as loans, but we always had to ask to get repaid. We finally started saying no. Also, and I hope I don't sound preachy, but don't just plan for state college. Both my kids were able to attend out of state schools because I budgeted for it, and because they got merit scholarships and survivor benefits, I only got one check for $255, gee thanks. Make sure that you are getting the full survivor benefits for your kids until they graduate from high school. You will be asked to account for how it is spent and, at least in my case, told to return any that was saved slash invested. I spent every penny of their survivor benefits on supporting them slash their school stuff slash their sports etc. That gave me the ability to use my own money to put roughly the same amount into their college funds. I think you'll get what I'm saying there. Of course, I'm considering the possibility of my children wanting to attend out of state. In my original post, I was just saying that if I quit my job at 45, I could fully pay for any interstate college they wanted to go in order to help illustrate my financial situation, so people would understand why my sister felt like they could ask so much from me. I fully intend to keep working past the age of 45, so that I can at least cover 75% to 100% of whatever college they want to go to. However, I still encourage my children to apply themselves for scholarships because every little penny helps. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for selling my family home because my pregnant sister-in-law ate my dinner? I want to point out me and my brother have two different fathers. I, 19 female, lost my father last year to cancer. He left me 90% of his stuff including his family home that was left to him by his dad, it's been in their family for over a hundred years. My brother, 34, and my dad, didn't have a relationship, but he did leave him 10k. My mom was pissed at the will reading, but since she got 10k she couldn't do anything about it. For the past year, me and her live okay together. She went on acting like it was her house like before, which I had no problem with. Till in May, my brother and his girlfriend, 30, moved in, without even asking me. They're messy, entitled, and rude. I told them in July I want them out by September because they don't pay for anything nor wash it ish. In August, they announced they were pregnant and my sister-in-law smugly said, guess we won't be moving out now. It didn't go down well, but when I told them I wanted them out, my mom and brother basically laughed in my face. Well, the past few months have been hell. They've become worse than before, and my mom enables it, then demands me to treat my sister-in-law like a princess because she's pregnant. I once had to wait outside McDonald's till they opened to get her a McMuffin. Well, here's where I may be the a-hole. Because my sister-in-law is pregnant, she eats everything she sees. Like the cupcakes my friend made me for my birthday, she ate all six, didn't even get to try them. I can't even make my lunch the night before, because when I go to get it, it will be gone. She'll have a smug look on her face while rubbing her belly, then laugh and say, I couldn't help myself, blame the baby. If I put stuff in my room, my mom will open the door with the spare key and sister-in-law can go through my mini fridge. Well, a week ago I was running late to college, I didn't have time for my breakfast or to make lunch, and I had to go to work straight after, so all I had that day was a bar of chocolate when I got home. I was starving, I made myself dinner. While it was cooling down, I went to use the bathroom. I must have been in there 10 minutes at most, by the time I came out, she had 70% of my dinner eaten, and I literally lost my crap. Of course she started crying, my mom and brother started screaming at me for making her cry, making excuses like how she couldn't help it and it was my fault for leaving food around her. Well, I had enough and I told them to get out. Just like before, I got mocked. But here's the thing, back in October my uncle offered me a life-changing amount of money for the house, I called him up crying a few days ago explaining the situation, he said he'd buy the house, but he will evict my mom and brother. They of course didn't take it too well, and I have had to stay with a friend. I've been receiving texts, and I'm being tagged in multiple posts on social media. I'm starting to think I'm the bad person now. So, am I the a-hole for making my mom and brother homeless? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. They stomped all over you man. They didn't treat you like family, so why should you treat them that way? You're fine mate, your uncle is the one evicting them, not you. I would caution against making a decision as huge as selling a home when emotions are high. It sounds like a solid offer from your uncle, but speak with a realtor to ensure you are getting a fair offer. I would also highly recommend you get a plan in place for rolling the money into a stable investment that will last, whether it's a home or long-term investments. Also, 
Consider if you really want to permanently part with your father's home. You could always evict your brother and rent it out, until a time that makes sense to live back in. Not the a-hole at all, and I'm very proud of you for standing up for yourself. Thank you so much, I might sound pathetic, but this made me smile. I've not heard the words proud of you my entire life. Wow guys, I'm actually crying, you have no idea how much this means to me. My family doesn't believe in even saying I love you to each other. Not the a-hole. I'd sell the house, let them get evicted, and have a smug look in my face when they're out on the street. Family means nothing if they treat you like trash. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not paying and giving up to my brother's tantrums? I, 29 female, recently bought a house and a brand new car. I will admit, I probably splurge on my house more than I should. But growing up very poor, it has been always a dream of mine to live in a nice house. I worked really hard to be where I am. So much so, I undergo countless breakups because I always choose career over boys. My brother, 25 male, is currently jobless. He works as a tourist guide before and can barely make ends meet. He has five kids now, and counting, as his wife announced pregnancy recently. He messaged me on Facebook, that there is something he wants to talk about, and I thought he wants to name me godmother to his incoming baby. I said sure, and invited him to the house to get his approval about some things I modified for our parents. I gave him a tour and he admired my house greatly, saying things like how excited he is to bring the kids to my house. I did not mind anything about it as I thought he meant a visit, which I'm more than happy to host them for. Imagine my surprise when he finally sat me down and finally revealed what he wants to talk about. He wants me to give him my house. I clarified whether he meant this house, or the other house I bought for my parents which I still lived in, still has modifications ongoing with my dream house. He said the house is big enough for his family, and I can go visit them anytime I like. He even offered that if I really wanted to live there, I can go move into the maid's room and modify it for my personal use. I was shocked I cannot speak, as he thanked me over and over for the house. I finally asked him where the heck did that idea come from, and said our mother told him I will give him my house. I of course corrected that, and this is where things gone south. My brother repeatedly said, since our mom said the house is his now, I cannot do anything but give in. I called my mother to tell him to duck off, and lo and behold, my mother sided with my brother. To make this already long story short, my whole family had cut me off, and parents disowned me until I give my brother my house. My father has been brought to the hospital over this fight, and now I feel really bad. The guy I'm seeing now said to just give the house to my brother and he'll help me to buy another. Reddit, am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole of course, but what the actual hell is going on here? The entitlement of your brother to expect that you will give him your house and the nerve of your parents expecting that you would indeed do this. Actually, if your parents want to provide for your brother, they can invite him to live in the house you've bought for them, and they can live in the maid's room. Your family is toxic OP and if that's how they see you, as a bank, then cutting you off is a good thing for you. I'd kick everyone but the dad, out of the homes OP owns. Both of them. And lock it down with a lawyer for safety. Cameras. All of it. This sub is way too familiar with some insane people. Is this a joke? One of the clearest not the a-hole I've ever seen. You already gave your parents one house, and they took it upon themselves to give your home away as well? Haha <laughs> thanks? I feel really awful though, as I mentioned, my father has been brought to the hospital over this. I feel really guilty, because if I had not fought my brother and mother, he would have been probably fine. He thinks I should give brother my house as he thinks I can afford to buy another in a few years. He has a point, so it eats me up. Not the a-hole. And you should sell the other house in your name since they have disowned you, and take it to go on an amazing holiday. How horrible. Ha, ha this comment made me laugh. This is the same suggestion as my boss, who also happens to be my best friend. She said I should use the money to treat myself on a nice holiday in Europe as I had always wanted. Edit, to clarify, the house that they gave away is the newly bought one. One I thought where I could raise five adorable fur babies. Family home is in my name too, as I have to take out a loan back then to buy it. So yeah. It may be obvious I'm not the a-hole at first sight, but I feel like I could be one because my father got hospitalized over the ensuing fight for the house. Edit 2, I'm trying to read all comments and I'm just so overwhelmed for your support. I'm temporarily staying at a friend's house ever since. 
Your encouraging words really helped ease my mood. I finally decided not to give this house, and sell the other one to help pay for a vast majority of loan on my dream house. I also decided to remove my parents' access to my health plans and remove them on my insurance. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.